Episode 12, Drink with James. New spaces, new faces. <laughs> JC from Dan and Dior is going to join us today, answer all the questions that I can't answer or don't want to answer. <laughs> As you guys know, I've been trying over the last 12 weeks to get The Rock to join us on the show. And uh, thus far, all of my attempts have gone <laughs> uh, In Dwayne's space, we have JC from Damsel and Dior, uh, who would be my ch second choice. Uh, <laughs> oh, thanks. Who is, uh, <laughs> so happy to be here. Yes. <laughs> Sorry that The Rock is not here. <laughs> The Rock's not here, but you, <laughs> you are tapping the Rockies. That is um, true. Well, she's drinking a Coors Light is with her whiskey. I, I was, uh, um, which is the Texas in you. I, I was guess. really surprised to see you're actually drinking whiskey in these, and not just during the episodes, but before as well. So yeah, that's a little known. So this is our second one. That's a little known pro tip: is that we drink one whiskey before we film. Yeah, um, this is going to be rough. More interesting. It's going to be so, rough. Um, quick, quick aside. Thank all y'all for sending in, see I get more Southern when I'm drinking too. All <laughs> Thank you all for sending in your questions. Um, Tim made me say that. I, I don't care. <laughs> because if you don't send questions, I'll make shit up. But Tim really wanted me to say thank you. So thank you for sending in questions. Please continue to do that. We'd be nothing without you. And I think what would be interesting is uh, to hear a bit more about currently now how you're thinking about growing your following as it's it's a little bit more crowded and, mm -hmm. and more difficult to do that so like what are the things you're focusing on now things have cha definitely changed a lot with instagram lately as we are all very aware uh everyone's talking about it not only with the instagram stories which i'm positive we will get into later but also with instagram's new algorithm um it's totally messing up people's feeds, in my opinion. I hate it, but um, we've had to adjust accordingly, right? We have no choice. Um, so basically, with the new Instagram algorithm, it's taking away your chronological feed. So when you open up your Instagram account, it's no longer in chronological order. It's, um, it's automatically lining up the posts that Instagram thinks you want to see based off of your engagement and what posts you're liking the most. So as a blogger, it's been a huge struggle. Um, I noticed a big, big decline in the post likes, comments, engagement, everything. So we have just, I keep saying we, I have had to get a lot more strategic with you know, the time of day that I'm posting um, and the types of content that I'm posting and just be a little bit more strategic with it, which is unfortunate because Instagram started out as this fun, carefree thing, mm -hmm. and now it's a little bit more strategic and I mean, calculated. a fairly large shift as a follower, I've noticed, on your Instagram over the last month. Yeah. From more, uh, like, editorial shots to just, like, you in front of a mirror with your camera phone. Yeah. You standing in front of your front door. Like, what... Is that just like are well, you being lazy? Is that <laughs> Definitely <it>? not. <laughs> I actually prefer the more editorial, beautiful images. You've taken a lot of beautiful photos on trips like to Palm Springs that we went on recently for brand campaigns and whatnot. And there's such beautiful images that are being taken, but people don't like those. And I was noticing that. And I honestly, and I've done this before. I've done this almost once a year. I ask my readers. Um, I think a lot of influencers are afraid to ask and be vulnerable. How did you ask? I posted on my Instagram a photo and I was like, hey guys, like, gonna be honest here, what the F is going on? Like, what, what aren't you liking? What do you like? What do you want to see? And that's what they wanna see. They wanna see mirror selfies, what I'm wearing on a like, pretty regular mm -hmm. basis, daily basis. They don't wanna see this like perfect photo that's in the, you know, in the middle of the street that's it's beautiful. They wanna see something real. Right. Um, and they want to feel connected to like what I'm actually doing with my life. So that's why you've, you've probably noticed a shift of some more yeah. mirror selfies. It's interesting. Well, Tim, you should, you should put a link somewhere up to that Instagram post. Because I, I, did you get a bunch of Oh my responses? God. I can't even. I mean, I think we got, let me see how many. Uh, we'll, we'll put it here. I think we got like six, seven hundred comments. Okay. I've gotten so like really hundreds of emails. For everyone to read. It's, it's crazy. Like, what? people are looking for because I'm sure yeah, as a fashion blogger. But it's also case by case because right. some of my friends who also have Instagram followings, their followers may love the glossy, beautiful, perfect imagery. My followers don't. That's so, the thing you have to understand. Like everyone's followers are different, right? right. So you have to, I think it's the best 
to ask your followers. If you're really confused by what they want, um, is just ask them. And, and at the same time, take it with a grain of salt. But at the end of the day, you have to stay true to your voice and you have to stay true to what it is that you are wanting to put out into the world. And that is the bottom line for me. Right. So I listen to them, but I'm still trying to do it in my own nice. way. How important was the blog in your growth? And mm -hmm. do you think that if I have a blog, if I have an Instagram account now and I have 20,000 followers, should I have a blog or should I just continue to just focus on Instagram? When I started my blog, I wasn't on Instagram. I took my blog and turned it into a full-time business because it was getting the traffic that I wanted it to get in order to make a living off of. Um, it was about 2011 um, when I made that shift, really 2012. And when you made the shift from? When I made the shift from having a job and a blog, it was 2012 and I had no Instagram account. We actually did a Quitters Club story on you. Yes, you did. And I think you can read it right here. Yay! Uh, <laughs> Click. About the job you used, to, you used to have. I had a lot uh, of jobs, but yes. Um, so, so but yes, yeah, so the importance of having a blog, right. to me, it's the most important thing because you guys, we don't own Instagram and we don't own Snapchat or Twitter or Facebook. Like, you put that content out there. Has anyone read the terms and conditions of Instagram? No, I know I haven't. And like, at the end of the day, like, that's not, you're not, you don't own that. You don't own that content. I own everything that goes onto my blog, everything. And no one can touch that. No one can add an algorithm to that or, you know, switch or it doesn't get bought by Facebook and there's all these changes happening and everyone's all frustrated and Pinterest won't allow you to do embedded links anymore and now we can't monetize on Pinterest. Like, I have my blog. That so is like, my, like, insurance thing. plan. That's what it is. It's not a no, it's not a control thing. It's an insurance thing. Right. That's, that's the bread and butter to me. And you can monetize off of it. You can do whatever you, you don't want ads on your blog. Don't put ads on your blog. I don't want ads on my Snapchat feed, but I have no control over that. You know, knowing you for a while now, I think you're, you're equally good at the business side of things as you are. Thank the you. Content side. And I think, you know, you always are getting asked to speak on panels about the business of blogging and things like that. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about negotiating, and, and I think a question that a lot of influencers have is just like, they're working with brands, maybe they have, you know, 25 to 50,000 followers, um, they want to start monetizing their, their following, like, should, for you, if you can think back to, mm -hmm. to when that was your following, mm -hmm. like, when did you start thinking about monetizing, um, how do you, and how do you start those conversations about making money? I started thinking about monetizing when brands started offering me money to do posts. Um, that's when you know it's time. You know, you can't jump the gun on this. Um, and you shouldn't be blogging if you want to make money because that's not, not the right reason to enter it's this industry. Money, right? There definitely is. It's called hedge funds. <laughs> no, just it's not the right motive to be a blogger. Um, oh, I didn't even know you could make money doing this when I started, so this is still a shock to me. Um, but yeah, I think the, the number one like, oh, okay, like it's time to start asking for money is when brands start to reach out and offer you money. Mm -hmm. um, but if you really feel like in your heart of hearts and in your gut that like your work deserves some financial, you know, and some sort of financial income, then um, you just ask. I have to do it all the time still. Like brands don't always reach out with like, hey, JC, we want to pay you to do this. Like it happens multiple times on a daily basis where they'll reach out and, and be like, hey, can you post yeah. this? So and I write like, back and I'm just like, like, oh my to... gosh, this sounds so great. This handbag's so cute or this top is adorable. Yes, I think my readers would really, you know, relate to that and respond to that as I do. Um, do you guys have a budget in mind for this activation? And either they'll write back and be like, yes, what do you charge? And I'll write back and be like, well, what do you have? <laughs> Never give them a number first. <laughs> that's like the number one I feel like rule for negotiation. I drank with James last week. Really? Right? You should not give up your price at that point. You should always go back to them and say, is there a budget for this project? Uh, because in that moment, you have the power. Yeah. Was it? Oh my gosh. So you're, you just said that because you watched it. No, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was like subconsciously quoting you. When I was first starting out, I would just come up with an idea like, how can I work with The Loft or how can I work with X, Y, or Z brand? And I didn't have a strong following at all. I think I had like 10,000 followers on Instagram. My blog was getting, you know, I don't even know, 300 to 500 views a day-ish. And I would just come up with an idea. And I would go to a brand and be like, hey, if you will gift me this top, I'll wear it and post about it. And then I would do it. 
and then go back to them with a full report about how it performed. And just like developing those relationships early on is really important because then later on they're going to see that you're just like a faithful mm -hmm. um, follower of their brand or if it's a designer or whoever. Um, it's, all, it's all honestly all about developing the relationship with them. Speaking of Snapchat, you must have brands reaching out asking you to do sponsored content. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you do it? No. Why not? I just don't want to. Good. Okay. End of question. <laughs> it's like the one people... place that I can just be free and be me. And right now I'm just enjoying that and the readers are loving it. So let's but just keep it, it that way. But brands, are re they're definitely trying to sneak it in. But giving advice read to... Read those contracts. Read your contracts. Yeah. Right? Giving advice to other blockers, if people are reaching out, do you think that the platform's still so young that you shouldn't be doing sponsored content? No, not necessarily. It's, it's just, just a personal, personal choice. Yeah, and again, like, I think I've said it probably a hundred times, but like, do what feels right to you. For me, it feels awkward for my brand and JC and what I produce on Snapchat, which you see, which is stupid. It feels funny doing sponsored stuff on my Snapchat. And honestly, anytime a brand reaches out and they're like, we're doing a sponsored post on the blog with social media support on Instagram or Twitter and Facebook, and then they like sneak it at the bottom, like, and then two snaps talking about it. I'm just like, dude, you don't want me being like, you should wear this fucking top because it's great, because that's what I that's what I do on Insta on uh, Snapchat. I'm like, you don't want me dropping the f bomb when I'm talking about your dress. Yeah. So like, trust me, you don't want me talking about it on Snapchat. But like nine times out of ten, I will anyway, because it's something that I really do like because I'm only doing partnerships that I genuinely like to do. So, yeah, so I just don't like to really include that. And then it's just kind of like a bonus, which by the way is a nice segue in that you should always overperform what the contract asks you to do so right. that the brand will like fall in love with you. And then they'll be like, oh my God, she was so great. She actually did two Instagrams instead of one. That's good advice. So if someone comes <laughs> to you and says, I need a blog post in one Instagram, Maybe you give might them, do two. Yeah, yeah. If I, Especially yeah. if you want a long-term relationship. Exactly, right? yeah. If you're just like. Go above and beyond. Yeah. And always send a thank you letter. Thank you letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Well, you know, you talked earlier about like pitching something to Anto or Loft, but like, how do you find? I mean, now you, it's easy. Water, like, what do you do? Forecard or oh, yeah. or go to their website, the old-fashioned way, and scroll to the bottom and, and go to about and find a phone number and pick up the phone and call. You just have to research, right. get smart, and come up with a new way to meet with them. Like, brands are being inundated right now with influencers reaching out, so. It's always, you always have to have a pitch in mind, always, um, some sort of idea. But don't oversell them on it. I mean, very rarely in a meeting will I even talk about an idea unless it's brought up, but if it's brought up, at least I have one, right. you know? Versus like, I don't know, we'll figure it out later. You'll be forgotten about. It's like a guy who asks you out and is like, hey, we should hang out sometime. Instead of being like, do you want to go to dinner next Wednesday at 8 p.m.? That's exactly how it is. Right. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. <laughs> What is something as a blogger that you should always avoid doing? Doing something for money. Okay. Um, because people are gonna tell. What is something any blogger of any size, what can they do today to help grow their business? Take a class, go to a conference, try something different, learn something new. Think outside of the box. What is the single most effective growth strategy that you've used as far as growing your following? When, and I'm gonna talk about like when you were still up and coming. What were the things you did that worked really well? Hang out with other bloggers and have them tag me in their photos. But the, the other people that you're hanging out with have to be on your same level. Because or then- a little higher maybe. Maybe it's like a little bit higher. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm like sweating, I'm drunk. Don't slam it, that's a $500 glass. Oh. <laughs> I did it! There we go. I'm so proud. Oh, Until my parents time, are gonna be proud. Thank Ooh. you, thank you. How do we do it? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs>